We're here in Pilot Point, Texas at Chad and Susie Chance's home of Pup Watch. And we're teamed up with the WCB to go up to Sheridan, Wyoming for the 2016 Don King Days. Our judging clinician up there will be Chad Chance himself, owner of Pup Watch. And so what we've got is we've got today one of the shoes for the individual class is going to be a suspensory front made out of 10 and a half inches of aluminum 3 8 by 1. And what we'll be doing is a little bit of cutting and chopping and trying to add a little bit of width to the toe of this shoe. This shoe is fullered for six, the Liberty 5 City Head Nail, and it is fullered. It's, it's got about an inch and three eighths in the toe, and it's got a concave inside edge because we want the heels to penetrate and we want the toe to float. The back of the shoe is going to have a concave edge that'll go into the ground and this is going to be safed off and the transition of safing will go right about just past the fullering but not into the toe too far. Well, we're not going to put a mark on it because we're going to bump the center third and try and put some mass for our flotation. One of the things with aluminum that you can do is you can Take your pen, your your a wooden handle, and if you can get any mark, and it'll get tacky. And right now it's sliding, so it's not it's not even close. There we go. Now we're ready to go at it. Keep these ends kind of narrowed up so you can grab onto them with your tongs. You keep those ends narrowed down and that'll give you a true representation of what you got in the center. But if you measure and you got the ends all puckered up, some of your bump is just going to be those ends mushrooms. I got three quarters of an inch. I'll, I'll add a little heat and we'll put a little bit more in there. See, when I draw them slightly, now I know that my toe bend is going to be here. But if I had a mushroom piece here or a mushroom piece there, I make my toe bend, then I draw those out, then I gain length. All right, we're going to make the toe bend. Come over here and I'm going to use the leverage from out here to tighten up the toe. Do the same on this side. Flattening it out the whole time to keep, I'm trying to have as much mass in that toe as possible. If I don't commit to too tight of a toe bend, that way if I draw this branch and draw that branch, I can still move my toe around a little bit to make sure I don't get racked too bad. I'm going to come with the soft edge of the hammer and I'm going to get that to start to draw. Flatten, 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 flatten. It's easy to get a wrinkle in there that you can't get out. Just kind of get this ragged bit off the end. I may not be exactly where I want to be, but I want to, I want to go and do some research and draw this out and see where I'm at with the other side. So come in here, start my branch, and then Constantly flattening.
Once I've got the transition from the branches and I've got plenty of tow, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna square it up. Like, I know I need a little bit more material for the lateral side. Come in here and I'm gonna try and get this square. So now I'm trying to get it as square as possible. And I've got where my line is gonna be. So I'm just gonna cut with my fuller. Now I've got a line to go to, so then I can come in here And every once in a while, come right here and reestablish this corner. And you notice I'm using the fuller the other way because I want this line to be straight and this line to be a bevel. Just pop it out. Do the other side. So that we get more penetration, we've got a concave surface here, we've got as much flat here, and we've got a straight edge right here. So now, what I'm going to do is just clean up my lines a little bit, but I think for the most part I've got nice clean edges to where I can follow my fullering with. The reason that I'm rasping on the foot surface is so I want to have a nice strong edge that doesn't wrinkle over when I go to shape in the shoe. I can always fit, fix the top edge, but if this bottom edge wrinkles over, it just won't bend right. So I'm just kind of putting a nice edge on there. Just kind of be real careful to not get into your, your edge on your concave. Just marking for my fuller. This mark is going to be slightly ahead, so my first nail hole will line up with my edge. It's really important to have your stock really flat on both edges because aluminum will dive. So if you don't have a flat surface, it really will dictate where your fullerin ends up. Come in here and get it nice and flat. And you can see it wrinkles over. So, but I've got the majority of the work as far as the material displaced. And so you just keep on getting that knocked in. But it'll wrinkle over that inside edge. So you want to make sure you flatten it.
Your nail pattern is probably going to be a little tighter than normal because you've got a lot of material that is up there in the toe floating and you don't want to just let everything creep into the back. Dunked it in the water, kind of harden the, pop that pitchel hole out. Just flatten everything up nice and tidy. This fullerin is going to dictate my lines on the inside edge. So I want a nice line to go by. That. up this shoe with light brushing and just a stainless steel brush just to get all the it really gets in the lowest parts of the aluminum and just kind of dulls it up a little bit <laughs> 